is it's me, Miss Norris, and today I'd like to share a fun read aloud with you of the story Franklin Goes to School. Now, like many of you, Franklin is heading to school. Let's see if there are some similarities. If you're ready to hear the story, I'm ready to share it with you. Here we go. Franklin Goes to School. You can see he likes to, he's painting at school. Franklin could count by twos and tie his shoes. He could zip zippers and button buttons. But Franklin was worried about starting school. And that was a problem because Franklin was going to, the, going to school for the first time. So he's, he can do a lot of things, but it still makes him nervous to head to school. Franklin woke up with the sun. It's my first day of school, he told Goldie his fish. Franklin packed his new pencil case with a ruler, a pencil, an eraser, and 12 colored pencils that he had sharpened himself. Then he woke his parents. So how many of you on your first day, you were very excited and you kind of woke up really early? I know I do sometimes when I'm excited for something, I wake up way too early. Hurry, he said to his parents, I cannot be late for school. Franklin's mother looked at the clock. Even the teacher's not awake, she laughed. It's too early. Oh, you must be very excited, said Franklin's father. Franklin nodded. Mm -hmm, I'm so excited. So it's way, way too early to go to school. You can see his parents look very tired. But And they said, even your teacher's not awake yet. He's excited. It was so early early that there was time to make a big breakfast. You'll need a full tummy to work at school, said Franklin's father. Franklin was not hungry. I already have a full tummy, he said. It feels like it's full of jumping frogs. Franklin's mother gave him a hug. I felt that way on my first day of school, but the funny feeling went away. Franklin ate a little. He double-checked his book bag. Finally, it was time to go to school. So he's a little nervous. He's got some little jumping frogs in his tummy. But his mom said that she felt that way on her first day, too. And that it just went away. Halfway to the bus stop, Franklin clutched his tummy. I don't want to go, he said. Franklin's father gave him a hug. That's how I felt when I started school, he said. Look, all your friends are waiting for the bus. So even dad said he didn't, on the first day, he kind of just wanted to go home too. But he pointed out that all of Franklin's friends are there in line for the bus. There was a big crowd at the bus stop. There were brothers and sisters and mothers and fathers. Beaver was carrying her favorite book. I can read it, she said. All of it, asked Bear. Yes, she answered proudly. Franklin rubbed his tummy. Mm. So Beaver's very proud of the book that she knows how to read all by herself. Rabbit pulled out a brand new notebook. My big sister showed me how to write my numbers, he said. All of them? asked Fox. Most of them, boasted Rabbit. Franklin looked at his mother. I want to go home, he said. We will be here after school to hear all about the things you did today, she said. So she, so Franklin's hearing about some of the things that his friends can already do, and it's making him feel more nervous. When the bus arrived, Rabbit grabbed his sister's hand and climbed aboard. 
Bear stood on the steps and waved goodbye again and again and again. Franklin hugged his mother, then his father. He kept hugging even after his friends had all found seats. So he wants to, he's giving extra, extra hugs because he doesn't want to quite leave yet. As the bus pulled away, Franklin looked out the window. He didn't know if he was ready for school. Do you think the teacher will yell? wondered Rabbit, who jumped at loud noises. Do you think there's a bathroom at school? asked Beaver, fidgeting in her seat. I hope somebody has an extra snack, said Bear, who'd already eaten his. Franklin did not say anything. The bus ride seemed very, very long. So it sounds like the other kids are worried about certain things, too. Is there going to be a, a bathroom? Is the teacher going to yell? Um, is there going to be extra snacks? But Franklin is just worried about everything. And he's quiet. When they arrived, their teacher was waiting. Mr. Owl said hello in a gentle voice. He showed them where to hang their coats and where to sit. He showed them where to find the bathroom and offered everyone a piece of fruit. Then Beaver and Bear went to the Reading and Writing Center. Rabbit went to the Play Kitchen. But Franklin stayed in his seat. So his teacher, Mr. Owl, seems pretty nice. And they gave him a snack and there is a bathroom. And it doesn't seem like Mr. Owl yells. And everyone's doing something, but Franklin, he's just sitting. Yeah. What would you like to do today, Franklin? Asked Mr. Owl. I don't know, said Franklin, rubbing his tummy. I cannot write all the numbers like Rabbit can. I cannot read like Beaver can. Rabbit and Beaver will learn new things at school, and so will you. Franklin started to doodle. I can see that you are a very good artist, said the teacher. So he says, everybody's going to learn something new this year. Rabbit and Beaver are going to learn new things, and Franklin's going to learn new things. Everybody's going to learn new things. But Franklin is already an artist. Franklin sat up a little taller. I know all my colors too, he said. What color is this? asked Mr. Owl, holding up a colored pencil. It's a special blue, said Franklin. It's, it's, it is turquoise. Now you have taught me something, said Mr. Owl. Is there something special you would like to learn? So Franklin just taught his teacher a name of a new color. And Mr. Owl is asking what Franklin would like to learn this year. There were so many things Franklin wanted to learn that he had trouble deciding. Finally, he asked Mr. Owl to help him read his favorite book. Franklin made a building of blocks. He sorted the money in the classroom store and painted four pictures. One for the teacher, one for himself, and two for his parents. It was a wonderful day. So once he started thinking about all the great things there were to do at school, he started being more excited about school and had a wonderful day. <clears throat> Franklin sat at the back of the bus all the way home. He bumped up and down. He was so busy having fun that he almost forgot to get off at his stop. His parents were waiting. How is your tummy, they asked. Franklin looked puzzled. It had been such a good day that he'd forgotten all about his jumpy tummy. My tummy is empty, he said. 
That's a feeling that'll go away too, said Franklin's father. So by the time he got home, it had been so long since he had a jumpy tummy and he had such a good day that he forgot that he'd even been nervous to begin with. I made this for you, said Franklin's mother. She gave Franklin his favorite snack, fly pie. And I made this for you, said Franklin. He gave his parents two pictures and two big hugs. The end. I'll get a little closer so you can see Franklin's paintings. One of his family and one of his home, it looks like. Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoyed the story of Franklin Goes to School, please hit that thumbs up button at the bottom of the page. If you're already a subscriber, thank you so much for your support. It really means a lot to me. If you're not a subscriber yet, please click the subscribe button down here at the bottom of the page. And don't forget to click the bell so that you're notified when there's new content. I hope to see you all again real soon. Bye-bye.